this video will be pretty easy compared to the rest. We're just doing an A-B comparison of cold plate size as it applies to Threadripper and thermal testing on Threadripper using two Noctua NHU-14S coolers, one of which is a TR4 edition with the full coverage cold plate, and the other one has an LGA 115X cold plate. All we're looking at is cold plate size impact on thermal performance. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by Synergy, the software that lets you share a keyboard and mouse between multiple systems. If you have limited desk space and multiple computers to command, Synergy removes the need for separate peripherals or a KVM and works as an over-the-network software. Use our link below to get 50% off the basic or pro version. This testing took some modding. These are both air coolers, and they're also the only coolers we presently have where it's the same cooler at the heart of it, with only one difference being the cold plate. So we can do a proper AB comparison. So the LGA 115X cooler, the much smaller cold plate size, only really contacts the middle. Uh, it doesn't even contact all of the dyes all the way across. I mean, this is worse than the closed loop liquid cooler coverage, which at least those cover the entire dye exposure area, if not the entire IHS. So you at least get heat away from the dyes on those. But with this one, because it's not built for Threadripper, it obviously doesn't cover the whole thing. It probably covers about the middle to bottom corner of each of the four modules, two of which are active, and that's it. Uh, so it's going to be hotter. But we were curious. We wanted to see what the impact was with the full plate. So basically, we took the mounting hardware for this one, the Threadripper one, which is pretty clear by that, and uh, took that off of there, moved it over here, drilled some holes so that the mounting hardware would support screws going through into the the cold plate of this one, the LGA one. And we were able to get some screws through there to hold it in place. Also added rubber dampers here to provide opposition as it's being mounted and make sure that there's enough mounting force. And once it's all said and done and the cooler is tightened down, it doesn't move at all. It's got the same mounting pressure as this thing does because it's using the same mounting kit. And there's a rubber bumper there. That means that we're actually applying downward force where it needs to be applied. Everything's good. The only thing that's not good is the cold plate size. So that's what we're testing. We're looking at these results with a, it's an AB comparison, the same heat pipes, same thin stack, everything. The heat pipes are the same distance apart. That's one note about this cooler is because they basically took an existing design and added a bigger cold plate to it. You're looking at a situation where it could certainly be optimized more, but to do that in time for launch was probably not feasible and might've cost too much for the volume they're expecting to sell. So Noctua has a heat pipe design that's basically identical to this one, where the heat pipes don't fully contact the entire cold plate of this unit, so it's not optimal, but it might still be good enough. We're not really here to review the cooler today. We are here to uh, look at the cold plate difference, but that does help control our variables a bit. So we've even got the same heat pipe layout as this one. That's pretty interesting, and uh, it's not contacting the entire cold plate, so it's not gonna transfer as well. So hence the question of, does it still do better with just that cold plate change? For testing, we're doing two. Prime 95 was way too abusive on the LGA 115X cooler. It was throttling like crazy. So we just didn't know what temperature would actually be hitting the CPU that is with Prime running. It was, it was too much for this cooler to handle. And so you look at a difference where you're hitting the thermal cap on one and not the other. It's not really a realistic difference. So we threw out Prime for this. We ended up using Handbrake and Blender because those were less intensive than Prime, still intensive in real workloads. Handbrake ended up being a bit better for this one. Blender was still kind of getting into throttle territory, uh, but Handbrake was pretty free and clear of that. And that's what we're testing. The clock rate and voltages were both fixed. They were set manually. So there's no turbo boosting. There's no change of the voltage or anything like that. And we'll have those numbers specifically in the article linked to the description below if you'd like to see those numbers. So let's get on with the results. These charts are pretty simple. With handbrake transcoding one of our videos for 30 minutes, the CPU reaches steady state and produces a temperature delta of 11 Celsius between the two. The TR4 cold plate is heavily advantaged in this particular test, keeping to around 57 Celsius versus the nearly throttling LGA 115X cooler. Threader per throttles at 68C T die or 95C TCTL T control. The idle delta is 3.8 Celsius, favoring the TR4 cold plate. Moving on to Blender, our load delta is about 10.5 Celsius, once again producing a favorable result for the TR4 cooler. There might be a bigger temperature difference here than we can see because we were starting to clock throttle on the LGA 115X unit. 
that could all be different but interesting because channel design could impact the efficiency of the solution. For example, a full coverage liquid block, you're, if you pull an older design, the channeling is going to be optimized for a die in the center of the IHS, one die, liquid flows over that die through some gaskets and out the other way. Whereas with this setup, because you've got two sets of active dies and opposing corners, uh, a more optimized channel layout may be beneficial. Now, once you're under liquid, does it really matter? Probably not a lot for most users because, again, once you're already under liquid, like with the X62, it's just kind of difficult to make the thing heat up enough to be relevant, even with overclocking. It really, temperature was not a concern with Threadripper. But there's still room to optimize all these things. There's room to optimize this because, again, the heat pipes could come out some more, get some better spread over the cold plate and the rest of the cooler. But it's just a question of does it do well enough as is. So this isn't a review of this thing, of the NHU14S, I think it's called. Yes, uh, TR4 edition. Not a review of that. We're not doing comparative data versus other coolers. All we're doing is what's the cold plate difference. So the next thing to look at would probably be, uh, I don't know, cold plate CLC design for the, uh, you're looking at the kind of mid coverage Asatec design versus the Apol Tech one coming out from Enermax where they've got a full cold plate, but is the pump actually covering that entire area? Is there actually, are there liquid channels through that entire area or is it just a wider copper footprint? So we'll be looking at that eventually, just whenever they come in. I don't have them yet. But that's all for this one. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. If you find these types of tests, A-B tests, interesting, gamersnexus.squarespace.com to pick up a shirt like this one. This is the GN Graph logo shirt. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.